All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot and the Thrilling Adventures of Whaling Days. The trim whaling ship, the Paul Parrot, has set sail from New Bedford in the spring of 1858 with a fine crew and the most unusual company of people aboard. Although she sailed with the announced purpose of hunting whales and collecting a cargo of whale oil, the true reason for the cruise of the Paul Parrot is to seek a valuable mineral treasure on an unknown island. Captain Dalton, his best friend and first mate George Wainwright, the one-legged sailor Dickon, the cabin boy Johnny Robbins, and little Sue Grain, sister of the ship's owner, have succeeded in uncovering the secret, which was known only to the owner of the ship, Ezra Grange. He is also on the voyage, supposedly as a passenger, but really to find the treasure he seeks. After a bold attempt by a Spaniard named Altesti and his partner in crime, Red Mulhooly, to get control of the ship and secure the treasure for themselves has been foiled by the bravery and quick thinking of our friends, the troublemakers have been thrown in irons down in the hold. Since Johnny Robbins' father was one of the original discoverers of the rich mineral deposit on the secret island, Ezra Grange has promised him half the treasure when it's found. Just at this point, with the villain safely disposed of and the ship well on its way to the island, a cry comes from the masthead. Archie blows. Blow me down, Mr. Grange. A whale sighted and so soon out. But with a new purpose in mind, the seeking for treasure, perhaps we might as well not waste time, Whalen. No, oh, no, Captain Dalton. Even though we are first on the mission of this map, Grange and Sons are still in the whale oil business, you know. We'll not pass up such a chance when it's right before us. Aye, aye, sir. Right you are. We'll make short work of this lover in no time at all. Wainwright, you and Dickon go on deck. Give orders to make ready for the catch. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, Johnny, we'll see our first whale caught. Yeah. I wish I could go along. Stand by. All hands on deck. Man the whale boats. Mr. Pascal, make ready for the catch. Mr. Judd, make ready to lower away. There she blows off the starboard bow. Avast, it's a mammoth one for fair, a giant blue whale. He'll be hard to take, but worth the effort, I'll lay you to that. Well, it's ready, sir. Mr. Jowett's boat will make the catch with Mr. Biscara's boat standing by if assistance is needed. Mm, he'll likely need it from that whale's size. Drop anchor! Heave her to! She's up too, Captain. Look, here comes old Dickon with our mascot Polly on his shoulder. He looks terribly excited, Johnny. Captain, Captain, Captain Dalton. Shiver me, Timbers, Captain, it's him. He's too, Dickon. What are you bawling about? Oh, Captain, to me die all day, I'd know him. He's the very one, the very one, Captain. Avast, Dickon, what's all this blabbing about? Speak up, man. Well, that, that whale roller out there is the same blue whale that caused me legs on 15 years ago. I've seen him since many a day, and he's a monster to make fast to. But it's the same one, Captain, you may lay to that, sir. But, Dickon, how could you be sure that that's the same whale when he's so far from the ship? Oh, lass, I could never mistake that whale. Never to me die and day. Captain, I want to go out after that whale. I always swore we met again. It would be him or me, sir. Blow me down, Dickon. You want to go in one of the boats? Aye, aye, I do, sir. Uh, I'm still as good a harpoon arm as ever. Lash me to a yard arm if I don't sink the iron deep into his carcass. Dick and mate, I know how close this is to your heart. I'm willing to give you a chance, but if harm befell you, I'd never forgive myself. Oh, Captain, I'll take the risk. Please let me go, sir. Hmm. I'll do it. Mr. Jowett, Dickon will go with you as boat steerer. Aye, aye, sir. Good luck, Dickon. Oh, but do be careful. Oh, heaven bless you. I'll not fail. Avast, mates! Avast, me! I'm Captain! Ah! Ah! We'll reach and blow and mill about, but we'll get them! Swing the main yard! Load away! Good luck, men! And follow close astern, Buscara. Aye, aye, Captain. Jowett's boat may have to weather heavy swells near that monster. There they go. I hope Dickon catches his whale. Aye, lad, there they go. Poor old Dickon has waited many a year for this moment. He can't fail. Batten down my hatch, but my heart is pumping as if I were out there with him. Look at that boat skim over the water. You know, it seems funny, Captain Dalton. You said Dickon would take the place of the boat steer, and yet he's not steering. He's standing up in the bow of the boat with the harpoon. That's right. The second mate, Mr. Jowett, is steering. But after Dickon makes his strike and makes fast to the whale, then he and Jowett will change places and he'll truly be the boat steerer. Oh. It seems to be a strange custom, I know, but it's always been so in whaling as far back as any man can remember. They're creeping up on the whale. Gee, he's really a big one, all right. He surely is. 
I never dreamed anything could be so big. <laughs> they can make no more noise than they must, young uns, because you see a whale's eyes are poor, but his ears are keen. And if he hears the slightest noise that's irregular, he'll sound. Sound? Yes, sound. Dive under. And once he's under, there's no telling where he'll go. He may breach miles away. Breach? What's that, Captain Dalton? By breach, I mean he comes up to the surface again. Oh, look, they're almost to him. Dickon is standing up with a harpoon in his hand. Yes, he's about to cast the iron. May the gods of the sea smile on him and bring him luck. Look, the whale's turning about. Blow me down, he sees him. Oh, my, he's going for the boat. There goes Dickon's arm. He's camped. Oh. He's struck. Dickon got him all right, but now there'll be the Dickens to pay any me later that. But the whale's turning around. He can't bite anything with his back turned. Aye, but there's the danger. A blue whale, though he's the biggest of all, has no teeth. His mouth is full of baleen. Huh? Baleen? What in the world is that? Baleen is really the name for whalebone. It grows in plates in the whale's mouth from 2 to 12 feet in length. Well, if they're not teeth, why are they in the whale's mouth? To collect food and keep it in his mouth. Oh. But it's not his mouth I'm worrying about. It's the flukes of his tail, the most dangerous things in all the seven seas. Flukes are the points of the tail, aren't they, Captain Dalton? That's right, Johnny. Those enormous points, those are the flukes. The whale is raising his tail out of the water. He's bringing it down on the boat. Oh. <laughs> Suffering whitefish. Both the boats are matchwood, and the men are all out in the sea. Oh. Wainwright, make my boat ready and lower away. Aye, aye, Captain. But by Jehoshaphat, I'm going along. Well, very well, George. In my boat. That's it, mate. Swing the main yard. Lower away. Oh, do be careful, Captain. Please, Mr. Wainwright, don't let anything happen to you. We'll be careful, Sue. We... Tommy, what are you doing in this boat? I had to go along, Captain. I'm small and quick. I can help. Well, blow me down, Roy. We're lowered now. There's no time to put the lad aboard. Oh, Johnny, you shouldn't have done this. But it's too late to do anything now. Keep low and out of the way. Ready, men. Here, men, I'll take the iron. You take a place at the stroke oar. I've got to make this strike myself. On, men, on! Jane, look! The men out there in the sea are almost drowning. That whale's turning up the water, so. There's Dickens. He's swimming for dear life. Easy, man, easy. We're almost on it. Wainwright, I'm going to cast the iron. Get ready to change places with me. Aye, aye, sir. A bat. There he preaches right ahead. Boil me and blubber. He looks like a man of war. And still see Dickens' iron in him. Yeah, it was a good strike. But this must be a better or we're all lost. We're on him, Roy. Give it to us. Here it is, you monster. Ah! Right. Change, George. Change. Keep the line. Get it, get it, Lord. Then go for your lines, but keep fast to him. Stay out of the way of his boot. He's raising his tail again. Oh! The board man, the board here, comes down on it! Look, the boat's half full of water. Hold on, men, stay afloat. He missed us. Don't let her capsize. He's running. He's going to ram us. A burn, men, for your lives! Oh. Blow me down, he's turning again. Give him another iron wave. Aye, aye, sir. There. That's it. He's on the run. He's on the run. Haul line, head, haul line. Keep it up. Oh, we're closing in on him. Make ready to give him the lance, George. Look, look, there's Dickens. He's alongside the whale. He's hanging on to his flukes. Dickens, Dickens, don't be a fool. You'll be killed by those flukes. He's climbing up on the whale's back. What has he got in his hand? Strap him down by a hat. He's got a lance. He's crawling over to one side of the whale. That monster sounds now. Old Dickon is lost. There goes Dickon's arm. He's sinking the land. Watch out, men. The whale's sounding. It's all over, men. He's done it. Old Dickon's done it. That blow of the lance finished him. Good old Dickon. He got his whale. In out! In out! It's all over! There the monster rolls over on his back. Gee, gee, I was never so excited in all my life. Come on, men, we've got to pick up the men. Bail up out of the, the water out of the boat, my hearty. We've almost been swamped. Captain, avast. There's Dickon. Dickon, Dickon, are you safe? Lend a hand, mate. Look lively right there. Help those hands to starboard. Oh, I got it, Captain. Fin out, I got him. Help him aboard, men. Easy there, easy, easy. <laughs> are you sound, Dickon? Are you all right? I'm sore as a boiled clam, Captain. But I done it. I done it. Nobody can say I ain't even up to score. Here, Dickon. <coughs> sit over here. We've got to get all those other men aboard. <coughs> Look, Captain. Mr. Nicholson on board is sending us signals with the colors and the gallants. He's sending out another boat to wait us and picking up the man. Good. 
Look lively, Mr. Wainwright. There's Buscara and his boat steerer support. And there's Jowett. Pick him up. Here comes Nicholson's extra boat. I think all the hands are accounted for, sir. Oh, fast. Let's see. Jowett and Buscara. Three hands here. Two making for Nicholson's boat. Five still overboard there. Aye, aye, Mr. Wainwright. All present, all accounted for. Our boat will still hold a few more hands. Help those men astern over the gunwale. Easy there, easy. Well, Dickon, it was a hard battle, but you've a stout heart. <coughs> Man and boy, I've sailed the sea many years, and I've never met with a braver seaman, and you may later that. Thank you, Captain. You don't know what this day has meant to me. I've evened up the bloomin' score. That great blue whale's flutes broke me legs on 15 years back, and that's how I come to lose it, you know. And now there the beast rolls, dead as a scuttlebutt. And it was your thrust with the lance when you were on the whale's back that did it, Dickon. Aye, lad. It's more than a fat exchange as I see it. I'm content now. Look, Captain. They're sending more signals up at the mainmast. So they are. It blew me down. They've sighted land. Land, sir, in these seas? I know. I know. No land hereabout. Uh, uh, fast. The signals say land three points off the weather bow. I can't understand raising land in this... Look, can you sight something there? Why, it looks like small smoke. I lad, you're right, but it's a lot of smoke for a fire. Well, shiver me timber, sir, if I may speak me mind. It looks like smoke from a volcano to me. A volcano? Why, the secret island we're sailing to has a volcano on it. Ahoy, lad, that's the ticket. That's it. You may lay to that. They've sighted our treasure island. Our cruise has reached its mark. Land, the secret island that bears the wealth of minerals that Grange has been heading for. Dickon has realized his life's ambition by killing the giant whale that once cost him his leg. But what lies ahead on this mysterious island? Will our friends have trouble ashore? Are the two troublemakers imprisoned in the hold of the Paul Parrot likely to start any more villainy? Only the further transcribed adventures of the cruise of the Paul Parrot will tell. Be sure to follow Captain Dalton, Sue, Johnny, and their friends on the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs> <laughs> 